Hi everybody, it's Tracy from Science Buddies. Welcome to our hands-on coding tutorial with K Nearest Neighbors, often abbreviated as KNN. In this video, we'll start off with showing you how to use Google Colab, then we'll step through each of the stages of implementing the KNN algorithm together. In this project, we'll be using a dataset of Titanic passengers to create a KNN model that predicts which passengers survived. To learn more about the fundamental concepts of KNN, check the second video in the description below. First off, I'll be showing you how to use Google Colab, which is a platform that allows you to write, run, and share code. You can run each cell by either clicking on this play button right here, or by clicking on the cell and pressing Control Enter, or Command Enter if you're on a MacBook. You can tell a cell has been run when you see the output here, or by this green check mark right here. You can add cells by clicking on this button on the upper left over here, and delete it by clicking on the trash icon to the right of each cell. If you accidentally delete a cell, you can undo it by pressing Ctrl and Z on your keyboard. We'll first start by importing the libraries that we'll need for this project. To do so, you just need to run this cell. Then we'll load the data set into the notebook. To do so, you can also just run the cell as so. We can check what the data set looks like by using the head function. Let's take a moment to examine the features in our data set. We can see that we have 12 features here, passenger ID, survived, P class, name, sex, age, sib SP, parch, ticket, fare, cabin, and embarked. Passenger ID is nothing more than a unique identifier for each passenger. Survived is whether or not a passenger survived the Titanic with zero being that they did not survive and one being that they did survive. P-class is a passenger's socioeconomic status with one representing the high class and three representing the lower class. Sib SP is the number of siblings or spouses a passenger had on the Titanic. Parch de defines the family relations with zero representing children traveling with a nanny, one representing a parent or grandparent traveling with a child, and two representing a child traveling with their parents. Ticket is simply the unique number that each ticket had and fares how much the ticket cost. Cabin indicated where the passenger was located on the Titanic and embarked is which port the passenger embarked from, with C representing Cherbourg, Q representing Queenstown, and S representing Southampton. To see the unique values of each column, you can use the unique function and specify the column that you want to see. And these are the values for survived. If we want to see the unique values, for example, P class, just type in as so. Make sure to type it in exactly as you see it in the data frame. Next, we'll start pre-processing the data set or getting the data ready for training. You can read more about why we need to pre-process our data set in the project instructions. What you need to do here is add in the features that you want to drop in this list. We have already given you the names of these features that we'll drop. Make sure to type these in exactly as you see them in the data frame. We can see what the data frame looks like by checking the head function again. As you can see, these features are no longer available in the data frame compared to this data frame from before. Next, we will normalize the features since KNN is a distance-based algorithm and scaling it ensures that no particular feature outweighs the other. For this section, you just need to list in the features as so, and run the cell. You can now see that after checking what our data frame looks like, all of the features that we specified here are now between the values of 0 and 1. Now we will encode our categorical features, since many machine learning algorithms, including KNN, are designed to operate on numerical data. In this case, our only categorical feature that we need to encode is sex, since the features survived and p-class have already been label encoded. We can see the different values for sex here by using the unique function again. And we can see that the different values for sex are male and female. We can just run this code to label encode the feature sex. We can now see that the values for sex have changed to 1 and 0 instead of male and female. Next, we want to drop our NAN, or not a number values. NAN means that there is missing or incomplete data. 
Missing data can often lead to biased or inaccurate results in many machine learning model predictions. So by removing them, it often improves the overall quality of the data set. We can just run this code to remove the NAN values. We can see here that before removing the NAN values, we had 891 rows in the data set. And after we remove it, we now have 714 rows. We will now split our data into training and testing data sets. In our case, we will be using the other features to predict whether or not a passenger has survived the Titanic. That is why we will drop the survived column in the X value and assign the survived column to the Y value as so. We can see what X and Y look like by simply using the print function. As we can see here for X, it consists of every feature except for the one that we are trying to predict, which is survived. Here's the code for splitting the data set into training and testing. With a test size of 0.2, that means that 20% of the data set will be used for testing and the rest will be used for training. We can check the shapes of the data sets. This means the number of features that will be used for the set, and this means the number of rows that are in the set. Finally, we are ready to train the model. All you need to do for this section is run this code. We can see the accuracy of the model here, and we can see that this model is roughly 76% accurate. We will be graphing the model using PCA, which is a method that simplifies complex data, considering that we have multiple features that we are predicting our model on. To create this graph, all you need to do is run this code. This graph shows the decision boundary between the two classes that we are predicting on, which is survived. The dots are the actual values of the class, and the background is what the model would predict if a new dot were to be placed in that region. We can see that the model correctly identifies most of the dots, but occasionally there is an orange dot in the blue region and there is a blue dot in the orange region. We can attempt to find the optimal number of neighbors by graphing the accuracy rate with the number of neighbors and finding a peak. To do that, you can just run this graph here. The x-axis shows the number of neighbors and the y-axis shows the accuracy. For what number of neighbor results in the highest accuracy? Another way we can test for accuracy is simply by changing the number of neighbors manually. For this section, you can compare different neighbor sizes by copying this cell by clicking on it, pressing Ctrl A, and then Ctrl C on your keyboard. Create a new cell, and then press Ctrl V. From here, you can change the number of neighbors, which is represented by this variable K. You can try neighbor size of 1, and we can see we have accuracy of 74% roughly. Experiment with different number of neighbors and try to find which one leads to the greatest accuracy. And with that comes the end of this tutorial. Happy coding! Remember that you can find written instructions and example of code for this project linked in the video description. For over a thousand other projects for all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.